Oh, I'm absolutely ecstatic because this is effectively a chance for Phil, a lifelong dream for me. A chance to go into space on a mission and to be an astronaut, which is almost every child's dream when they're younger. And for me, a one-year mission makes so much more sense than a return mission. Because we're not talking just a short stay, plant a flag and then return. This way, by doing a settlement mission straight away, we can build a lasting legacy for the human race. And that's what really motivates me to do this. And a lot of people have raised some doubts about whether or not this, this mission is, is at all feasible. They also have some concerns about its safety as well. Uh, do you have any worries? Well, of course, uh, there's risks and there's worries with any space mission. But what makes Mars One a great mission is that because there's eight unmanned precursor missions before the human missions, this is actually going to be the safest mission in history. Don't forget that the Apollo module that landed on the moon in 1969 was never tested on the moon before it landed. So, of course, there's risks, but... Um, yeah, it's much safer than it could be. Oh, well, absolutely. Well, in fact, the journey to get there, for example, will take around seven months or so. And we've had the advantage that over the past ten years, we've had people living on the International Space Station for six months at a time. So we've already gotten quite a lot of technical expertise with long-duration human spaceflight. And, of course, from my physics background, I'm a very sceptical person. I'm a scientist, so I've examined the technical plans of Mars One. And so I don't believe it's a technical obstacle towards this mission happening. It's purely financial. And uh, you're a scientist, you're going to need a lot of scientists up there, but uh, you're going to grow your own food, as you say, you're going to need uh, training in gardening, uh, you're going to need doctors, because not everyone's necessarily going to be well the whole time, plumbers, electricians, there's an awful lot of training that needs to go before you get up there, presumably. Hmm. Absolutely. That's why the training for this mission takes at least eight years, which contrasts to the usual two years an astronaut has. Because it doesn't matter if you have a PhD in astrophysics, because then you don't know dentistry, you don't know agriculture, you don't know geology. There's so many things that we have to learn, and that's why it takes so long to train for this mission. And what do your family and friends make of, of your uh, decision to go for this? To, and, you, and what's their reaction to you making the short list? So, in general, my family's been quite supportive because I've never made it a secret that I've wanted to go into space ever since I've been really young. Um, but, of course, in some respects, they're wary of the, the one-way aspect. Uh, particularly my, my younger sister, who's two years younger than me, I'm extremely close with her, and I, I love her to bits. Um, but she says, so long as, obviously, I'm still in contact with Earth and send back video messages every couple of days or so, then that's why she wouldn't personally want me to go, but she knows it's my dream, and um, she, she says she, she wouldn't want to stand in the way of me achieving my dream.